everyone, Shoshan here at Barnes & Noble for the Jonathan Larson Project Music and Signing. As you can see, George Salazar, Lauren Marcus, Charlie Rosen, and Jennifer Ashley Tepper are all behind me signing these wonderful, wonderful long CDs of the Jonathan Larson Project. I'm going to show you a little bit what you can expect if you get this nice little old school CD. Just a quick side note, I always love getting the CDs and reading the things and looking through the pictures, and it's so nice to be able to still do that. You will have to buy it to see for yourself. So stay tuned for BWayShow.com. I'll have all the video from the three performances, plus some awesome conversation that happened in between them. As always, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, B-Way Show. That's B-Way-S-H-O. And you can join my Patreon and become a Showtreon. We'll see you at the show. This is a dream come true. Buy it. Buy the album. Look, it's a book. I thought these were handwritten notes also, but it's his actual notes like from writing it thrilled to have some of the cast members here who are going to perform some of the songs. Um, and here to tell you a little more about this unique project and introduce the cast and songs, we're very excited to have the creator and director of the Jonathan Larson Project. Jennifer Ashley Tepper is currently the mention of her name by the club. And wait you hear all these things, all her credits, and she answers her emails in like a minute. <laughs> She's currently producing the new Broadway musical, Be More Chill, which opened up now. Woo! Some of you are here. Um, as well as the brand new Joe Iconis musical, Broadway Bounty Hunter. Woo! I don't know if people saw a beautiful show, right? I mean, Woo! I saw last week. It's like crazy fantastic, right? Um, and actually, the composer, Joe Iconis, is here tonight. Woo! But I digress from Jennifer's introduction. <laughs> She's also the creative and programming director at Feinstein's 54 Below, the author of the Untold Stories of Broadway book series, <laughs> and historian consultant on the upcoming film version of Tick, Tick, Boom. Let's go. <laughs> Larson Project album with us. Uh, just so I know, who has either seen the show, who saw the show in October, or has listened to the album online already? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Um, so this will be the first time today that the songs have been performed live since that run in October, so I'm very excited. Uh, we have with us today Lauren Marcus, George Salazar, Woo! Nick Claymeyer, and our music supervisor, Charlie Rosen. a teeny bit of backstory. Uh, you know, I have been obsessed with Jonathan Larson since I was a wee tot growing up in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, a lot of you probably know this, but my bat mitzvah sign and board is me dressed as Mimi from Rent, popping out of a pile of Rent playbills. So um, we'll fast forward from that. That was just like a 13-year-old moment. Although I will say that I remembered my second Rent CD I bought, I had to buy a second one because I wore out the first one, uh, was out of Barnes & Noble. So hey, Barnes & Noble, what up? Was born uh, from a miniature concert I did celebrating Jonathan Larson's unheard work at City Center as part of Encore's Off Center's Tick Tick Boom production. So um, a number of years ago they had these lobby concert projects um, and I did this five song version of what became the Jonathan Larson Project um, and that concert actually did feature some of the same people that ended up doing the Larson Project proper including Nick Blameyer, Joey Connors was in it. Um, and at that point, I started talking to the Larson family and the estate about expanding it into this full evening that essentially is like the song cycle that Jonathan Larson never wrote but might have. Um, so I spent five years at the Library of Congress going through all of his papers and tapes um, and eventually ended up putting together this, you know, 17-song song cycle that we're all here to celebrate. So um, the first song that you guys are going to hear is Nick Blameyer singing One of These Days. 
Um, one of these days is a song that was cut from Superbia. Uh, so Superbia was this musical that Jonathan worked on for about six years. Um, when he was in college, he started writing a musical version of 1984, which is relevant, book adaptation of a musical, we're in a bookstore. Um, and when he couldn't get the rights to do 1984 as a musical, he thought, okay, I can't get the rights to this, so what is my own version of like a futuristic dystopian musical? And he came up with the crazy premise for Superbia. Um, so in this song that you're about to hear, which Nick sings on the album, and it's amazing, uh, he's playing the role of an inventor, who at the star of Superbia is this inventor named Josh Out. Um, it comes in the category of some of my favorite musical theater songs, which are musical theater writers writing about being musical theater writers, but <laughs> pretending it's about something else, like inventing. Um, but I love that it kind of gives us a personal glimpse into Jonathan, as well as being from a book musical of his that um, is really worthwhile and that the world just hasn't seen. We never got to see Superbia. Um, so with Without further ado, here is Nick Blamire with One of These Days. Yeah. 
sounded totally different from each other. And if you listen to the album, you know, um, you know, hosing the furniture doesn't sound like rent. It was so exciting to me to be able to present all of these different things that Jonathan was doing that people didn't know about. Um, and in doing that, I had the great luck to work with the best musical supervisor and orchestrator that there is, Charlie Rosen. <laughs> You guys might know Charlie, he's also the uh, music supervisor orchestrator of Be More Chill and Broadway Bounty Hunter. Um, and we really took a deep dive into this music. So um, I'm going to put Charlie on the spot and ask him, uh, when working on the Jonathan Larson project, what was the most interesting part of constructing it musically? That's a great question. <laughs> well, the, the cool thing about this project is that unlike any other musical I've worked on, obviously I can't have a direct interface with the writer and what they're thinking and their thoughts. Usually when you orchestrate a musical, you meet with a composer, they play the piano, they play the guitar, they make sounds. You sit with them, you take what they've done, and you say, okay, I hear the potential in what you've done, now let's talk about the direction you want to go. What bands influence this? What artists? What instruments do you like? What are, what are the, what's the collage of influences that I can then make? Take those in a bag and like run as far as I possibly can with them in the direction that you want. I couldn't do any of that stuff, obviously, unfortunately. But I was able to see and put myself in the headspace of like, okay, if the year was 1980, whatever it was when he wrote this, what would he have been listening to that I can use my own musical knowledge to reverse engineer his brain to draw from like what pop music was going on? You know, so it was like a two or three levels deep process there. So then through scraps of paper and Melodies written on a piece of paper, you know, cassette, floppy disks. I, I, I had to, it was sort of like a reconstruction restoration project to try and get inside the mind of him to think, okay, he wrote this chord and this chord progression, which kind of sounds like this Depeche Mode thing or like something going on. And so then I had to then take that, like, I think he meant this and just run with that as far as I could. I, I hope I did right. You did it right. Um, what I loved was I learned a lot of normal music during this process of collaborating with Charlie because he would hear a Jonathan Larson demo and go, oh, from this Jonathan Larson demo, just like you said, I hear this and this in it, and I would be like, who the heck is that? Like, what's going on? So it was exciting to learn some normal music. <laughs> Um, I also want to say with Charlie on stage, we had like the most killer band for this ever. Yeah. Um, and Charlie's playing on the album, and so is Natalie Tenenbaum, who's killing it at Mean Girls. Um, mm -hmm. Megan Talley, who we have at Broadway Bounty Hunter, killer guitarist. Mm -hmm. Marcus Walls, who's on Be More Chill, mm -hmm. and Cody Owen Stein, who's on Hades Town. Just like wanted to give a shout out to them. Um, mm -hmm. And you heard what that sounded like. They kind of just went past. They're just phenomenal, and we're part of it. Um, do you have any final thoughts before I introduce the next song? No, please do. Okay, great. Um, so a fun fact about the song you're about to hear Lauren Marcus sing, which is Break Out the Booze, um, is that Break Out the Booze, John Larson did a lot of work with Naked Angels Theater Company. Um, that's why at the end of this song, if you know it, um, there's a lyric about let's get Naked Angels, and people are like, what is that character talking about? I'm like, no, it's a reference to the theater company. Um, but this particular song was written for um, a show called Tell Them Angel Send Me, which the theater company did for one night in 1990 at a club called Tattoo on East 50th Street. Um, Peter Gallagher was also in it. Um, our dear friend Alana Levine of Little Known Facts podcast was in it. Um, and Jonathan wrote this song for it. Um, and actually, fun fact, uh, diverging, you know, diverging from the what we're talking about, but Mariah Carey made her professional New York debut at this club a month before. So she opened for um, this Jonathan Larson song, um, which um, was so exciting to have Lauren Marcus perform in the Jonathan Larson project. And without further ado, here she is to sing her down. Don't waltz at the door, and I hear. 
conversation about it and I was like we're out of town in Boston in 1965 with a new musical this is so great um, and we did we worked on the show throughout the week and in different little ways it was the best week ever we ate a lot of steak tartare if you've a look um, as I was listening to these songs I also had the privilege of meeting with a lot of Jonathan Larson's friends and family and talking to them and honestly a lot of the stuff that I discovered at the library that actually you know you would never see in the Jonathan Larson project informed so much of it um, there were diaries and you know notepads full of ideas that he didn't end up writing and all kinds of things um, but one of the most interesting things that kept coming back is that so many people said um, if Jonathan had lived his next show would have been incredibly political um, that was something that came up over and over again and so much of the material that I discovered at the library that was the most exciting was the truth is a lie and the song you're about to hear um, some, like songs that were so political and that I think pointed towards La Vie Boheme and things in Rent that were very political. Um, but it was fascinating to me to kind of learn how he was commenting on what was going on during his time and of course how it's reflective of our time. Um, so the next song is going to be sung by George Salazar. It's Iron Man. Um, Woo! Uh, this was a reaction uh, to the Exxon Valdez oil spill that Jonathan wrote. And who was writing songs? Who was writing musical theater songs about that kind of environmental disaster like Jonathan was? He was so ahead of his time in so many ways and was writing about such important things. Um, it's just incredible. I just thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting this, the Jonathan Larson Project, um, for coming to Arts Noble. Uh, thank you, before I leave the stage, to Steven Sorrentino for putting this together and to those <laughs> This is like a 40-page 
first booklet, and we don't get those anymore, so it's really a rare thing and really special. Um, and here is George Salazar. <laughs> See? 